just a perfect time to speak to you as well. If I walked down my hallway at home and I threw half my books out, Jeff, because I'm blind like two years ago, I kept all the textbooks. There's Mankiw, there's Abel Bernanke, there's uh, Carlin Sosky. There's all these great books, including what you studied in 101 at Wisconsin. Is any of this Fed moment, this theory, this framework, is any of this Fed process in the textbooks? I think so. I think that uh, the empirical record of the Federal Reserve over the last uh, 100 years or more that they've been around uh, shows repeated instances of them pivoting from a concern about promoting demand and growth to a concern about um, trying to fight inflation. Um, their record is um, not that great. I think less than half of the time have they done it without successfully, that is reduced inflation, without successfully, without pushing the um, economy into a recession uh, by overdoing it. It's uh, hard to do because of the lags involved. And they've um, set out a course for themselves this year and they've They've got a tough job this year, for sure. Are, are, are they going to move forward, and do you have confidence they can move forward and recalibrate and adjust with stability, or do you suggest there is instability risk? I think they're threading a needle. Um, I think they have to tighten um, rapidly enough to uh, ease demand and, and ease inflation, um, cool down inflation. But I think that they... Um, are going to be mindful of not uh, going too fast and pushing the economy into the recession. I think they're all going to be mindful of SOM's rule. Uh, this is this amazingly consistent empirical regularity that the unemployment rate never rises more than five-tenths of a percentage point without rising two or three percent percentage points. So, you know, without the economy tipping into, inflate, into a recession. So they're going to be they're going to be on uh, eggshells this year. Jeff, what it would it take to slow things down? I just want to understand that from your perspective, because clearly that number has shifted in the last 10 years and shifted quite a lot. And clearly it's different with inflation at 7 percent compared to, say, inflation down at two. What do you think it would take? Um, so it, they'd have to get the real rate positive, um, perhaps up to one or two percent. And if they got inflation down to two percent, that would take obviously three or four percent. Uh, nominal rate on the Fed funds rate. Don't have to get there overnight. Uh, can get there in a year or two, but to lay out the expectation so that markets understand it, that's about where uh, the Fed funds rate is likely to be at the end of 2023. I think that's what it's going to take. That's well north of where their dot plot is, as you know. I wonder, Jeff, how you would think that the balance sheet reduction would play into that as well. Is that something that complements that effort, something that replaces it? What would it mean? I think I, so. I've been in the camp uh, for a while of thinking that the balance sheet is kind of small beer uh, relative to funds rates um, it increases. So I, I don't think the balance sheet. I think they ought to roll off the balance sheet and they ought to get about it rapidly and soon. But um, I, I don't think that that's the major um, determinant of the stance of monetary rate, policy right now. It's sort of a marginal effect. Um, so um, yeah, I think they need to um, you know focus on the funds rate and getting that going. Do you think, uh, Jeff, that Fed Chair Jay Powell has been a good communicator through all this? I, you know, yeah, given the hand he's been dealt in terms of what to communicate by the committee, yeah, but I think um, that there got to be a lot of my former colleagues um, on the Fed, I feel bad for, who are looking back at the last year and feeling as if the Fed didn't play its hand very well. What, um, they can you were, elaborate on that, sorry, Jeff? On. No, no, I, I sure. apologize for cutting you off, but can mm -hmm. you elaborate on no which problem. aspects, which moves they made that you think, in retrospect, were big mistakes? I, I'd sort of say two or three things. First, they, they hamstrung themselves by placing them under this tactical constraint of um, giving the market a huge amount of notice before uh, they started tapering. So Powell said, you know, we're not even talking about talking about tapering. Well, that means you got to talk about it and then so on. I think that delayed their reaction and they, they felt compelled to go through this steady march of releasing discussions in the minutes before they started tapering. And they put on themselves the constraint that they weren't going to raise rates until they stopped um, 
that they stopped purchases. So I think that set them back materially. And and I think you can see like around August and September, they realized they needed to start raising rates. They could have done it in October, November, but they were on this sort of tapering thing. Jeff, Um, the second. No, please continue, Jeff, continue. Sure. The second. Well, the second thing is the way they think about maximum employment. I mean, they think of it the way uh, as 3.5 percent unemployment and the labor force participation rate back up to trend. And I think that caused them to misinterpret inflation in the first half of last year. I think they assumed, well, we must. There's a lot of slack in the economy. It can't be, um, inf- you know, a persistent inflation surge. And they were wrong because maximum employment last year was about where it was, about where actual employment was. We got to maximum employment. Maximum employment varies over time. It depends on all sorts of developments okay. in the economy. I don't think they take that on board. Hey, Jeff, this is a delicate question because we speak to all these people with immense, immense respect. But I'm going to suggest, Lacker's never heard me say this, Krugman and Lacker are on the same page, that we've got to go back to a much more traditional economics. And Jeff, for you, that's Wisconsin 1970 economics, which was one of the leading departments Departments in the world at the time is the is the regret of the Fed looking at John Williams, Richard Clarida, one of the founders of DSGE, that the Fed's getting too mathy and they've got to get more conceptual about the real economy. Uh, so I, this idea about maximum employment varying over the cycle, I mean, that's been around a while. There's been some new empirical work on it by Robert Hall and Mariana. Kudliak, but I, I don't think of that as, as a new idea. What I think they ought to go back to is before the last framework revision. I think the last framework was a mistake. It essentially took preemptive rate increases off the table. And I think in hindsight, last year would have been the ideal time uh, to uh, engage in that in the second half of the year, nudge, nudge the rate up a bit just to hedge your bets about whether inflation's persistent and transitory rather than putting all your eggs in the transitory basket. Um, but I think that the framework that took uh, preemptive rises, uh, rate increases off the table, I think that was a big mistake. So, Jeff, just finally, is this a failure of ex-post monetary policy? After all that effort to shift in that direction, are you saying it's failed and we should go back to what we used to do? I, I don't think that the new framework was a constructive step forward. I think that people took for granted uh, the price stability we had from 95 on, and I don't think they appreciated the extent to which... Oh. You know, small preemptive moves were really okay. what established the credibility of the Fed. Jeff, this is this is fiery language. Can they catch up and be preemptive at 2 p.m. this afternoon? I I think um, I think they can, and it's going to play out over a couple of meetings. But I think, um, you know, they're they're at the next meeting. They'll release a summary of economic projections that'll have a, dot, a new dot plot. And that's an opportunity for them to spell out uh, that, you know, they anticipate a more aggressive um, uh, path. I think they could be more realistic in that doc, in that summary of economic projections about inf- their inflation forecast. I, I don't think 2.6% is at all plausible at this point. I think inflation is likely to be 4% or north of that this, this uh, calendar year. Um, and I think they can spell out the extent to which they're going to, how they're going to respond to incoming data. Are they going to discount um, blips one way or another? Or are they going to get on top of um, uh, inflation if, and, and move the rate path up if inflation comes in stronger uh, than expected in the first half of the year?